It's a Thursday morning here on Plus TV Africa. We begin the newspaper review, the program, where we we'll take a look at our national dailies and make sense of it. I will begin and then later be joined by public affairs analyst Bolaho Olojede, who will be joining me to review the papers remotely. We have a couple of papers here for you today, but we shall begin with the punch newspaper already displayed. It says the federal government to certify airlines before flight resume. That's on page 19 of the punch newspaper. I have never vowed listed any process in FDB. That's additional. As you know, uh, there's some conversation around his appointment. That's the reason, page 20. Reps clash as panel reports blames, uh, panel reports blames Nigerians in China. On page 7, churches may reopen in June, says Christian Association of Nigeria. Can on page 10. And a big story for Punch, federal government can't cope with increasing coronavirus cases. That's according to the minister. It's on pages 2 and 6 of the, of the Punch newspaper. To the right, as always, you see the figures for Nigeria. We stand at 8,733 cases and then uh, 2,500 recovered, 254 deaths. And um, on the global figures... You can see it's also to the far right there on the paper. Now, 21 states have fewer than 100 beds east. That's according to the presidential task force. And then government shortlist. If you scroll that down a bit more, I'll be able to uh, read that headline out. Anyways, Nigerians evacuation suspended. Uh, U.S. deaths cross 100,000. And we can see some picture stories also there. And um, um, yes, um, I can see my phone. I can see that, um, as already mentioned, federal governments can cope with increasing coronavirus cases, according to the minister. Nigerians' uh, evacuation suspended, and U.S. Uh, death toll now cross a hundred thousand uh, of coronavirus. Still on that newspaper, we have picture stories there. And then we have PDP member elect blocks Quara assembly entrance and six inauguration. That story you will find it on page 11 of the Punch newspaper. Seven killed as truck and uh, car crash on Ilorin Jeba Road. Unfortunately, on page seven also you find that Ize Yamu emerges a Shomale faction APC camp candidate uh, Obaseki kicks against it. That is on page 11. And then lastly, we have 200 Zampara Kasina bandits killed in airstrike, according to defense headquarters there. That story is on page 7 of the Punch newspaper. Police torture man to death over friend's offense and detain cops. What sort of story is that? It's on pages 4 and 5 of the Punch newspaper. And then PDP accuses Fiamy of selling a kitty governor lodge in Abuja. That story is also... Um, page 11. I mean, I have Golahan now on the line. Uh, Golahan, would you want me to take the headlines? If you did, you hear the headlines at all? Good morning. Uh, I heard some of the headlines. Okay. So, uh, maybe I can just go ahead and comment on some of them. Oh, yes, please do go ahead. Let's begin. I already introduced you. Thank you for joining me. Yes, uh, we have a technology challenge this morning. Yes. Um, churches may reopen. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I think there are also plans to make schools reopen as well. My um, comment on this is that we need to be careful, especially on the side of things. I think for churches and schools to be able to reopen, each of these institutions we need to be to send representatives who are going to be trained in some basic infection control things. Right. So that they act as the eye of NCDC in all the facilities. They can correct things that are going wrong, they can advise, they can do because the eye of the government will never be able to do around all these institutions. That's right. So it is better representatives from each of those institutions are trained and I'm able to be the police to correct and ensure that all the girls are lined up. But well, you know, but the only issue I, I, I would say there is if we've not started training these people, right? How, how, when would this even start? And then 
Um, if we are suggesting or saying, well, let's get them back to school and have them know all the rules, physical distancing and everything that they need to do, how possible is that that we will follow all of this instruction? Because, you know, children are involved. Yeah, because that's, that's exactly my uh, biggest thing, especially in the school. Uh, but we forget that in some part of the world, uh, schools are also resumed. So there are things we can copy from those times. Right. Um, it's, it's much more difficult with children. They're not used to all these social distancing things. But the good thing about children is also that they are trained in When you tell them this is where you need to speak, you can, you can bet that they will, they will most likely uh, comply with that. So if there are eyes that know what to do, uh, that know what to do, then they can be the check. Mm -hmm. we, we, we're, we're never going to be able to close down the schools forever. That's neither, right. Neither the neither the So we just have to get practical and as much as possible, see what we can put in place to provide the necessary comfort. Mm -hmm. And we can try things out. Right. I agree with you on that. I agree with you. All right. Is there, do we take a look at another headline there screaming at you? Uh, there was something about uh, uh, this, you know. Yes, I've uh, never, you know? he says, I've never violated any process in African Development Bank. Yes. Um, African Development Bank, all right. Well, African Development Bank has foreign investors, investors who are outside of Africa, who Correct. have interest in six years. Uh, Nigeria yeah. happens to be the highest equity movement of that organization. Mm -hmm. There has been an initial uh, inquiry, and that inquiry found additional uh, not wanting. We, we, have, we have done well. Now, one of the major equity players in um, the United States is now asking for another investigation again. Of, of, of the gentleman. Mm. There are also certain pregnant, I mean, from the Pantheon country. So it is good to be able for everybody to be accounted. So I support the fact that if there is need to check certain things out, it should be checked out. At the same time, we also have to watch out for issues of victimization, you know, an African development fund that is being controlled by America or other Western countries, all those kind of things like states that are Jesus is white and dead is black. We have to be conscious of all this and then come on our feet and be firm about it. Let there be inquiry, but no 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 victimization of someone because it's black or it's Nigerian like, yeah, or, or, or whatever. That's that's my statement. Okay. All right, before we go to the Guardian, Gwalaho, still on that matter, I'm just wondering, uh, on, on, on the flip side, it just looks like, um, or rather, me, let, let me rephrase it and say, when do we move to move away from the point where it looks like, it almost feels like we always need validation from the Americas? I mean, you know, are we ever get, going to get to the point where we don't need them to validate, you know, any of our decision? I'm not saying inquiries should not be done, but are we ever going to get to that point where it doesn't look like we, are need, we need a go-ahead from... Uh, America to move on as a nation on different issues, not just additional's own particularly? Uh, unfortunately, um, they are too much into, into all, right into our home marriage, from the way we live our life every day, from the desire to want to bleach so that you can be fair, from the desire to want to wear long hair and straight, long as straight hair. From wearing suits and ties in 35 degrees heat of the tropics. I know, right? Everything <laughs> about us is validation of the white, of, 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 of the West. Mm. This is just an I, I see no reason why Africa cannot even finance African Development Bank. Give them their money and let them get out of the place. It's African Development Bank. Mm -hmm. Let's raise capital and let's be able to run our show. But the more we keep running to them to borrow money, to do this, to do that, the more they will continue to impress upon us what they think we should be and what they think we should do. Mm. It is high time as we publicly do that we start getting out of office, but we should not be different in All right. Um, all right. Let's proceed, Balahon, to the next paper, which is the Guardian newspaper. It would be displayed. Oh, already displayed. Thank you very much.
to the production team. Now, confusion, again, the same story. That's the headline, uh, the big story for them. Confusion over additional bid for fresh tenure as African Development Bank's boss. Uh, that's the big story there for the Guardian newspaper. And of course, the figures, COVID-19 figures globally and nationally. Just as a reminder, in Nigeria, we stand at 8,344 cases. Uh, confirmed, and then 259, 49 deaths, rather, and three, 2,385 recoveries, as you can see. Federal government issues guidelines for reopening of schools. Uh, that's on the front page. And can NSCIA submit rules for resumed worship? Churches may hold services first Sunday of June. That story is on the front page, and it's also continued on page six of that newspaper. And um, somewhere there, we have COVID-19 deaths reducing amid disturbing cases, according to Minister. Um, all right. I, I feel like, it's, is it me who's not understanding? The cases are reducing. Uh, you said COVID-19 deaths reducing amid disturbing cases. How, how so? All right, find out. That story is on page three. Why Africa records, records lowest COVID-19 cases and deaths, according to WHO? On page four, and leaders seek better welfare, education, enhanced future for children day, Children's Day. On page four, Kaduna extends lockdown by two weeks and relaxes movement on page five. Well, yeah. I'm Yeah. All right. Let's begin. The, the, it, it's interesting to note that Africa has recorded the lowest COVID-19 that's my case. And this is what some people have told them, including myself, have advocated way back. That we need to be studying our own peculiar environment. Mm -hmm. Not just uh, uh, importing everything. You know, whatever they say on the global scale is what we say. We are here in Africa. Our environment is different. And we need to study our peculiar environment. For example, we're just we're doing a hydrochloroquine trial right now. Yeah. Hydrochloroquine issue has come up seven weeks ago. Maybe that after that time, people have started up trials and not really now. After all, we're really doing You know, so it, 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 it's something akin to what it's divine intervention. In March, we were told that over a million people would die in Africa, and there would be dead bodies all over the place. A month after, that was divided down to 195,000, later to 175,000. As we speak today, the active cases of COVID in Africa, we saw it go to what they have as active cases in Spain alone. Right. You know, yeah. so I think if Africa continues to maintain all the infection uh, uh, procedures, and we continue to study our particular environment so that we know what to adapt, what to change, what to take off. Um, the division of, uh, of, uh, of uh, the number of deaths may not actually happen. Right. Okay, well, uh, Kaduna extends lockdown by two weeks and relaxes movement. Is that good news or, well, somewhere in the middle? What's your thoughts? Oh, uh, well. We don't, we don't have the information that they have. Somehow, I, I, I the fact that uh, Governor L. Rufai himself was a victim uh, of, of COVID yeah. uh, has made a particular impression on people. Uh, and he seems to have been the only governor right now that is uh, insisted on this continuous uh, uh, lockdown and lockdown. We don't know what report he has before, so it's difficult to, 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 to take a position. Mm -hmm. But we, we just have to believe that we have something that is guiding his uh, continuous decision to lock that. Right. I, I know you might have something else to want to talk about on this uh, paper, but let's talk about this. Leaders seek better welfare, education, and enhanced future for children. You know, yesterday was uh, Children's Day. And um, we had a lot of leaders, you know, coming and talking about how they want to assure the um, um, quality of, give quality education to the children, of Nigerian children, especially in schools, and in, to improve it. And it just felt like, you know, words are cheap. Um, 
And in the face of COVID-19, let's even start talking about where we are. We're not getting enough children. Uh, not all, every child or every family can even sustain the online education. There are those, who, those in the rural areas who, who, up until today, we don't know what is happening with them. Uh, how are we going to now achieve this sort of education, quality education that our leaders are talking about? Uh, quality education, because the education is a teamwork, and it's important that we understand that. It sits on three critical pillars. We have the infrastructure, so which we will include the platform for this student to study now that the COVID season is there. Then you have the teacher, the quality of teaching, and you also have the curriculum. All these three things work together to deliver the right quality of education. Without the infrastructure, without quality, without the right curriculum, we cannot achieve the right uh, education that we have. At this COVID season, if we pay close attention, because it might be easier to get carried away with the fact that we all these students in private schools. Uh, their parents can give them devices and they can have better classes. But what about the public schools? What about the, the people in the rural areas? Right. In some parts of Nigeria today, you, you struggle to network. There are places where there are no network. And there are students who do this as well. Right. How would they expect it? So, whatever plan we are making at the center must help this class of there are already, I mean, I was speaking to somebody yesterday who was having an exam with a university student in Nigeria. He was having it online. So exams are already taking place online, but it's not going to universities in Nigeria. It will not apply to all the medical systems. I would say that all the special systems have access to be able to receive virtual classes. So our plans include this very, very important. All right, uh, Bolahon, the network is not by our side today at all. Unfortunately, we may, yes, have, to, we may have to wrap it up here on Off the Press. Thank you yeah. for being with me this morning. Stay safe out there. All right. Have a good day. All right, thank you. And that's how we call it a wrap on Off the Press. Remember, it is Monday to Friday. The time is 8.30 here on Plus TV Africa. I am Amaka Okoye. Saying, please, stay safe out there.